Bethesda has earned quite the reputation for making absolutely terrible gun designs in their games, so when they announced Starfield, I was really worried it would be like Fallout 4 all over again. Then I saw the trailer showcasing a comically oversized double-barrel shotgun shooting rifle rounds. That also ejects the whole cartridge after firing. At that moment, I knew it would be another Category 5 disaster. I know a lot of people have been saying that the guns in Starfield aren't too bad, but if you take a look under the surface, you'll realize just how cursed they truly are. Dare I say, they're even worse than Fallout 4. It's pretty obvious that these guys still have no clue how guns work, so that's why I'm here to help them out by going over everything wrong with the guns in Starfield. It's pretty hilarious seeing the sheer amount of boneheaded mistakes and immersion-breaking errors. Even purely from a gameplay or artistic perspective, there's still plenty of questionable design choices that need to be addressed. So for this video, I'll be examining the guns in Starfield and then rank them in a tier list based on their overall design and implementation. I'll also be comparing them to their real inspirations and uh, try to figure out if these firearms would actually function. Let's go ahead and get started with something familiar to set a solid baseline. Ah, yes, the classic Colt 1911. This gun is so reliable that it was able to outlast the Earth itself, along with a couple of galactic wars. The model itself is a fairly close replica, but there are a few oddities. First thing I notice is that the trigger guard is weirdly elongated. I've seen some people say that this is to allow your character to fit their fat space glove fingers in there, but I don't know about that one. The space gloves in this game aren't any more chunky than regular gloves. Even if that was the case, it shouldn't matter. This says that it's an old earth firearm, not a 24th century reproduction, so it should be as faithful as possible to its original design. It's not like it makes a difference anyway, because your character's fingers still clip through the trigger guard in third person. This old earth pistol, as it's called, is also missing this part here between the slide lock and the safety. Whatever the hell that thing's called. Uh the plunger tube. Yeah, it's completely missing the plunger tube, so that means you won't be able to unclog your toilet in case of emergency. Also, the gun fails to automatically lock back during an empty reload, probably because there's no plunger tube, so your character manually racks the slide each time. But of course, they do it every single time, regardless of whether or not it's an empty reload, because this whole game lacks a partial reload mechanic. Even further on the list of historical inaccuracies, this magazine holds 9 rounds instead of 7. Not sure how that's possible. The magazine and grip look to be the same size as the original. I guess they did that for gameplay balancing. But holy hell, this thing is unbalanced. It's way too damn good. Like, it'll shred through terramorphs like they're made of microwave butter. Very realistic, if you ask me. 45 ACP is God's cartridge, after all. I also really appreciate that they made the fire rate so fast. You can spam the trigger on this bad boy fast enough to get the ATF to raid your spaceship and shoot your dog. Another thing which I thought was pretty funny is that if you have the kid stuff trait, your dad will give you a free 1911, but he refers to it as a revolver. And he had this collectible revolver, collectible revolver, collectible revolver, collectible revolver. I'm not sure if your dad so happens to be a descendant of the ancient race of Californians, or if there was just a miscommunication with the voice actor, or perhaps it's the third option, and the developers at Bethesda don't know the difference between a revolver and a semi-automatic handgun. Either way, it's quite a boneheaded oversight. So overall, the Old Earth Pistol is pretty good, but it does have quite a few problems. I'll still give it an A tier though, because if I go any lower, then Joshua Graham will warp drive to my location and blow out my kneecaps. The XM2311 is basically the same thing, just a more futuristic version made during the 2300s. It looks very similar to modern day models such as the Kimber 1911, which is the gun that John Wick from Fortnite uses. Very cool looking gun, the only thing holding it back is that it shares the same issues with the base 1911, so it gets the same rating, A tier. Now if there were to be another gun to outlast the Earth itself, it would surely be the AK. The in-game model on this one is pretty decent overall. It's definitely the best attempt that Bethesda has made on the AK platform, that's for sure. Unlike in Fallout 4, this one actually has the charging handle on the right side, so props to them for finally figuring out the difference between left and right. What I think is kind of funny though, is that it has the words Made in China stamped into it as if it's a toy specifically made for American use. Obviously, if it were supposed to be a Type 56, then all the words would be in Chinese. But it looks like this AK is kind of its own custom thing with mismatching parts. Maybe they ordered the receiver off Wish.com. I can appreciate the rugged aesthetic 
prosthetic with the duct tape, but I don't think that tape would hold the polymer handguard on there for too long. That shit looks like it's being held together by hopes and dreams. Why in the world would you ever want to tape a handguard on top of another handguard? Like, bro, just go ahead and swap out the parts at that point. Kinda silly if you ask me. Or better yet, just don't change it at all. Yet, rifle is fine. But in all seriousness, the lack of modifications is kind of disappointing. You can't take off the polymer handguard or add on a stock, so the recoil of this thing would be rather terrible in reality. But of course, it's a video game, so your Chad character just manhandles it like a gangster in a drive-by shooting. I give the Space AK an A tier rating. We've also got the AK's cousin, the VSS Ventores. Oddly enough, it's called the Old Earth Hunting Rifle in-game, which is a rather odd name to call it, because this is a Special Forces military weapon. I don't think it was used for hunting deer too often, but the developers at Bethesda probably just saw the wood stock and assumed it was a civilian hunting rifle. I don't know about y'all, but whenever I think of the word hunting rifle, I think of something that old Farmer Joe would have, like a Winchester Model 70 or a Remington 700, not a Special Forces versus Spetsnaz weapon with an integrated suppressor. Something like old Soviet marksman rifle would have been much more appropriate. So besides the silly naming, it's a very close replica of the Ventores. The main difference is that the handguard is made of wood instead of polymer, but it does have half of a polymer handguard bolted on top of it. The only thing I really don't like about this gun is, once again, the lack of modifications. It's forever stuck in the same configuration, and you can't take off the sniper scope. It would have been really cool if you were able to modify it into a fully automatic AS Val that shreds at close range. Lots of missed potential with this one, but if I simply judge it as is, then it's pretty dang good. I really want to give this one S tier, but since these boomers named it wrong, I'll have to put it in the A tier for now. So far, the old Earth guns have been pretty solid, especially for Bethesda standards, but unfortunately, they did the pup shotgun real dirty. The old Earth shotgun, as it's called, is basically an amalgamation of several different shotguns to make the most average-looking pump shotgun in existence. It almost looks as if it was AI-generated, like it's got all the right parts, but they're just assembled wrong. It's not too bad, though. It looks okay, I guess. Just, uh, slightly cursed. The main thing I hate about this gun are the animations and how you operate it. For some reason, the forearm, or the pump you could call it, starts in the rear position. So when you cycle the shotgun, you pump it forward, then backwards, when it should be the opposite. You can even see that the bolt still follows the pump forward, which is impossible, because that means it's jamming straight through the barrel. And when you pump it back, the bolt doesn't go all the way back, rendering it incapable of cycling ammunition. So by all means, this shotgun is completely broken. When it comes to the animations, well, they are exceptionally jank. It almost looks like they were ported straight from the first Doom game. You can't aim down sights while cycling the gun either, which makes it feel even more clunky to use. Shotguns are supposed to feel badass and powerful, but this one is more limp than an 80-year-old man with erectile dysfunction. On top of that, the shells randomly eject from below the barrel of the shotgun. It's nowhere near the ejection port. Plus, the shells eject directly upward, which doesn't make any sense either. At the very least, Bethesda did manage to implement a counted reload for the shotgun, so you do reload the correct amount of shells instead of always having to reload six every single time. It's about damn time they figured that out. But even then, this reload is still bugged. If you spam the reload key, you can squeeze in an extra shell without ever having to cycle the gun. But even worse, sometimes the reload just bugs out entirely and it automatically cancels. This bug is suspiciously similar to a bug seen with the bullet counted reload mod for Fallout 4, so I'm not sure if Bethesda just straight up ripped off this guy's mod, or if it's something that's just inherent to the glorious creation engine. Either way, this shotgun is absolutely chalked, no doubt about it. This one's getting a D tier. It's genuinely so bad that I can't bring myself to use it in game. The only thing keeping it from F tier is that it looks okay from far away. And look, I don't mean to be the kind of guy who tries to ruin all the fun. I just really prefer when developers put in the extra time and effort to make their games as immersive as possible. I'm a big nerd for guns especially, so I really appreciate when developers can do them justice. If you're really into immersion too, then you ought to check out today's sponsor. Enlisted is a unique World War II shooter that incorporates elements of both PvE and PvP. It allows you to command a whole squad of AI teammates and engage in large-scale multiplayer battles. You'll find yourself on every front of the war, 
from the beaches of Normandy to the islands in the Pacific. The fast time to kill, coupled with target-rich environments, makes for quite a chaotic and intense experience. I honestly really enjoyed this approach to a multiplayer shooter. It's not quite as sweaty as other games, but it still has a hardcore and gritty atmosphere that's also historically accurate. The squad mechanic is easily my favorite part of the whole game. You can swap between squad mates at will, which creates a unique dynamic that I haven't seen in any other shooter. So when you go down, you can immediately switch to another soldier and take revenge on the other player. You can also manage and customize your squad in different ways with all the available classes. You can rush in with a squadron of submachine gunners, or hang back with a pack of snipers. Or, better yet, just blow everyone up with a tank crew. The best part is that anybody can get into Enlisted because it's entirely free to play on all major platforms. You can use my link in the description to download Enlisted, which will also grant you a premium account coupled with a bonus pack to help get you started. And that wraps up all of the real world guns. Now we can move on to the futuristic stuff. Let's continue with the Maelstrom. Yes, I said Maelstrom, not Maelstorm. If you read it wrong, then I'm sorry to break it to you, but you probably have dyslexia. And no, I'm not gaslighting you, I swear. Go read it again. But anyway, the design of the Maelstrom is heavily inspired by the Origin 12 shotgun. The receiver, the stock, the barrel, the handguard, and even the magazine. It's eerily similar, yet also very different. The most jarring difference is that this isn't a shotgun at all. It's just a really bulky assault rifle with a dummy thick magazine. It looks like it would be a quad stack due to how thick it is, but it's not. Turns out the rounds are huge. So I have no clue how this magazine holds 40 rounds when it's a double stack. I even did some quick math to test this theory, and there is no way this magazine could hold more than 24 rounds with bullets that big. And in case you're wondering, this ammunition is referred to as 6.5mm CT, which is a polymer-cased telescoped round. Telescoped means that the bullet itself is inside the casing, kind of like a turtle's head hiding inside of its shell. You can even see that detail if you look at the ammunition in third person. It seems out of this world, I know. But it is a real thing that was prototyped recently in the NGSW program. The in-game ammunition is a little different from its real-life counterpart, though. I was also kind of confused about this pipe that wraps around the gun. Like, what is this? A water-cooled machine gun? No, actually, it's connecting a number display to the barrel, so I suppose it's wired to a motion sensor that's counting down the bullets as they leave. Honestly, this seems like a totally unnecessary contraption. Why in the world would you go out of your way to make such a complex device when you could just look at your heads-up display? Like, come on, are these guys fucking stupid? Other than that, the only thing I can knock it for is the balancing. First, this dummy thick round should be doing way more damage, and second, it should be recoiling much harder in return. This gun feels and plays like a 9mm SMG with how smooth and weak it is, which is fine if it were chambered in a smaller cartridge, but since it's chambered in a fully powered rifle cartridge, this bad boy ought to be hitting and recoiling much harder. So in addition to that, the fire rate should be slowed down to make it more controllable. From the very start, the concept of this gun is very weird. It looks like a shotgun, but it's technically a battle rifle yet it handles and performs like a submachine gun. Yeah, that makes no sense. When I look at a gun, I should be able to tell what class it is simply by looking at it. But the Maelstrom completely breaks this rule. I guess the design itself seems functional, but the execution is far off from how it should actually perform. When it comes to the aesthetics, they're not too bad. It does mostly look like an origin after all, so it is pretty cool. But it's also slightly cartoonish in a way. So overall, there's quite a few issues with the Maelstrom. I don't think it's absolutely terrible though. For now, I say C tier is a fair rating. Next we've got the Kraken, which is a machine pistol chambered in 6.5mm CT. Uh, obviously that doesn't make any sense because it's a rifle cartridge as we established earlier. But in game, the Kraken still manages to spit out pistol sized casings. So I guess this ammunition just morphs between rifle and pistol size depending on the position of Mercury and Saturn. <laughs> I guess <laughs> I'm guessing the developers did this for convenience sake, but still, it doesn't really work out that well in game because there is zero reason to waste all of your ammunition on the Kraken when the Maelstrom does more damage and has more range and a bigger magazine. So from both a realistic and gameplay perspective, the Kraken should have its own unique ammunition. Now when it comes to the overall design, it's alright I guess. It mostly reminds me of the Mac-10 just with a bunch of useless junk added on top of it. The reload especially is kind of weird because it opens up like a stapler, and look, you can even see the staples right there. Not really. If I had to take a random guess, I'd say that this is a, uh, a heat sink for cooling purposes, but really, I have no clue, because never have I seen a heat sink being used as a way to cool down a firearm. It seems really silly, but 
I can't say for sure how effective this would be. It does make me think though, why doesn't every gun in this game have a cooling system? Shooting in the vacuum of space would heat up your guns pretty damn quick, yet it's simply not an issue in this game. But anyway, as I was saying, the Kraken is another mid-tier weapon honestly. I'll put it in C tier, next to the Maelstrom. Before I move on to the rest of the guns, I should go over the topic of caseless ammunition, because from here on out, literally every single gun uses it. With caseless ammunition, there is no metal casing. Instead, the casing is made out of solid propellant and the bullet is telescoped inside. Since the propellant dissipates after firing, you don't have to worry about extracting any casings. Caseless ammo is pretty neat because it allows you to change up how rounds are fed into the gun, plus you can carry more bullets with less overall weight. Or you can carry even bigger bullets in an overall smaller pack. Package. That means you can get over 200% more bullet per bullet, which is a lot of bullet. In the real world, caseless ammunition isn't really viable yet. There have been prototypes such as the HKG-11, which featured a really weird Pez dispenser magazine, along with a rotating bolt instead of a reciprocating one. And the best part is that the propellant was shaped into a rectangular prism instead of being round, while the projectile was still a, a regular bullet shape. They definitely made it as weird as possible. The G-11 never reached full-scale production though. It was too complex and not worth all the trouble. Plus, it looks really goofy. Some main problems include overheating and the ammunition being too fragile. 300 years into the future though, I think it's fair to say that these downsides will be solved. Anyway, I just thought I should mention all of that before I get comments asking why all the rounds are square and why the guns aren't ejecting any casings. Let's move on to the first pistol you get in the game, the Eon. The main problem with this gun is that it doesn't have a moving slide or a moving bolt or any moving parts really, so I have no clue how it would function. It seems like it's a complete dud, so you might as well convert it into a nerf gun. It already looks the part too. It's bulky, bubbly, and colorful. Like it literally looks directly inspired by this particular nerf gun, and that's probably why it's not functional. Now I know that this gun is using caseless ammunition, so it doesn't have to function like a typical firearm, but it still needs some moving parts to cycle ammunition. The only time something ever moves is during the reload, when the top cover of the gun opens up like a stapler. This exposes the barrel, but it looks like a completely fixed structure. You never see anything move, nor does your character operate anything to manually cycle the first round into the chamber. And I have no clue why it has a top cover that opens up anyway. It doesn't do anything besides make you feel like you're reloading the gun. Maybe this gun is using some kind of space magic mechanism that we can't see, but really I think the more likely scenario is that the developers didn't put any thought into how this gun would function. Besides the gun itself being a useless brick, it also has a useless brick under the barrel. It looks like an integrated laser, but as it turns out, it's completely non-functional. You have to craft a laser attachment for it to work. Now that is just silly. What's the point of having this on there in the first place if it's not even functional? All around, the Eon has some pretty big issues. It's not irredeemable though, like if they slimmed it down and made it functional, it would be a pretty neat sci-fi gun design. But as it stands right now, I'll have to put it in D tier. Now if we take a look at the Urban Eagle, we can see that this one does have a reciprocating bolt. I guess you can't really call this a slide anymore because the top part doesn't move at all. Uh, kinda weird, but anyway. It's obviously inspired by the Desert Eagle. This one is just, uh, urban. Wow. Revolutionary naming, I know. Like what, am I supposed to call this thing the Weagle instead of the Deagle? Obviously not, that doesn't sound right. So just like the Deagle, the Weagle is shooting a pretty big bullet, 43 caliber to be exact, but since it's all futuristic, it's using caseless ammunition. This round doesn't really feel that mean or intimidating though. The sound of this supposed hand cannon is rather pathetic. And the limp animations aren't convincing me either. The reload animation especially is kind of weird because you still reload it as if it has a slide. There is this little piece on top of the gun which is used to charge the weapon, so I guess you'd call that the charging handle? Or the charging slide? I don't know man, this thing is weird. It's not even connected to the bolt, so I have no clue how this would work. Maybe it's using advanced Bluetooth technology. The same goes for the iron sights. They magically slide back during a reload, despite them not being attached to any moving parts. And oh boy, the irons themselves are pretty bad. They are way too tall and skinny. You would not be able to make precise shots with this thing. But even weirder, the barrel is square, yet it's shooting round projectiles. Like, come on, these guys can't even fit the right shapes into the right holes. And what the heck is this hole above the barrel for? 
Really, the whole top part of this gun seems completely unnecessary. You've also got this useless angled foregrip on the bottom. Like, why is that there? It's not like you're going to be holding this gun like a rifle. But what I especially hate about this gun is how slow the fire rate is. It's artificially capped to like one bullet per second, which makes this gun feel extremely clunky and unresponsive. Compare that to the real Desert Eagle, and you can spam the trigger on that bad boy pretty fast. Meanwhile, the mere Weagle is extremely unsatisfying to use. It comes nowhere close to the greatness of its ancestor. At the very least, it doesn't look too bad from far away. It still has a good-looking silhouette, but that's all it has going for it, really. The Weagle has even more issues than the Eon, so I can't put it any higher than D tier. Now looking at the Side Star, this one looks to be the Glock of the Starfield universe. Like seriously, if you just delete this part under the barrel and this tumorous mass of plastic on top, it becomes a space clock. And these parts definitely need to be deleted because they serve no purpose. Especially this part on the bottom. It doesn't look like it's any sort of useful attachment, nor does it have any function in game. Overall, the Side Star is very similar to the Urban Eagle. It has a square barrel, a mysterious hole above it, Terrible iron sights, along with a bunch of other random junk added on top. It has reciprocating parts too, but it's not one cohesive slide. It's three independent parts all moving separately and out of sync from each other. That just seems overly complicated and completely unnecessary. This thin piece on top is used as the uh, charging handle, or you could call it the charging slide, I guess. But it's not clear how it's connected to the bolt. I was thinking that this part is supposed to be some kind of weird uh, telescoping bolt perhaps, but that can't be right because it doesn't move when you charge the weapon, so I'm out of ideas for this one. It just seems like a completely random moving part. Also, the barrel reciprocates, but the rear of the gun doesn't, so I'm not exactly sure how this thing cycles ammunition. Maybe this one also has some space magic mechanism beyond my pea brain comprehension. Trying to think about how these sci-fi guns would work just makes my brain hurt, especially when they're coming up with new mechanics that don't exist, so there's no examples I can compare them to. Perhaps Bethesda's knowledge of futuristic and theoretical gun designs is simply beyond our mortal understanding. Or maybe the reality is, is that these developers didn't put too much thought into it and just slap together some random designs that they thought looked cool. But really, it's not very cool. It's kind of ugly, especially with that hunchback and the other useless junk added onto it. I'd say the Side Star is on the same level as the Weagle, so it belongs right next to it in D tier. Now what's especially funny about all these futuristic pistols is that the only one that has a slide so far is a revolver. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you can technically call this a slide, but it is something on the top of the gun that moves. I'm not sure what this is uh, supposed to do. I think my hypothesis from earlier was correct. These guys truly don't know what a revolver is or how it works. Not only that, but it's also like an anti bolt pup because the cylinder has been scooted further forward. There's not much reason to do that. It just makes the barrel even shorter, thus leading to less power and accuracy. I mean, seriously, look at how short that barrel is. Probably not even two inches. And I hate to be the guy to tell y'all, but two inches is not a lot of pipe to work with. It's not like you need all this extra space behind the cylinder either. It doesn't do anything. And again, what's with the handguard on the bottom? You never hold it like a rifle, nor can you modify it into a rifle. So this part is completely useless. The regulator is also using the same ammunition as the Weagle, yet the ammunition displayed in the cylinder looks completely different. It's also kind of silly that you completely replace the whole cylinder while reloading, as if it's a black powder revolver. While there is historical precedence for this technique, it just seems odd that firearm technology 300 years into the future would regress instead of getting better. I was hoping there'd be some kind of fancy speed loader, but I assume they went with the brake action cylinder replacement because it's easier to animate. Good old Bethesda the cutting corners as always. So all around, the regulator is an absolute disaster. It's pretty dang ugly too. The rounded features don't do this gun any favors. It looks like a cockroach morphed into a gun. I really wish I could stomp on it and hear it make a loud crunchy noise. So yeah, the regulator earns a glorious spot in the F tier. The rest of the Laredo guns aren't much better. The Rattler is another terrible, non-functional design. The most obvious issue is the magazine. Instead of it being a good little normal pistol with the magazine in the grip, this one decided it wanted to be special, so the magazine is directly under the front end of the barrel. It's a drum magazine too, which is odd. This magazine almost reminds me of the PP-19 in a way, but at the same time, it's completely different. With the PP-19, it has a spiral-shaped feeding mechanism, and it reaches all the way back to the receiver. 
receiver. With the Rattler, though, it makes no such attempt to feed directly into the chamber. It would have to have some kind of tube system like a pump-action shotgun to feed properly. But of course, that would be very complicated and not worth all the trouble. Jeez, it's just like the Fallout 3 shotgun, but in pistol form. I don't see why they try to reinvent the wheel here when you could just have a normal pistol magazine. That way, you could load in different types of magazines too. Small, extended, or even a huge drum. There's lots of versatility there. This design, though, is way too restrictive and completely unnecessary. At the very least, this pistol does have a normal-looking, functioning slide, so that is nice to see. However, your character never racks the slide after a reload, so it wouldn't actually cycle any ammunition. The wood furniture is an interesting choice, too. It may look cool, but it's definitely not optimal for a space gun. Wood furniture isn't very resistant to the elements, much less the extreme environments out in space. It's a miracle that this thing doesn't spontaneously combust when in direct starlight. If it's only meant to be used on planets with atmospheres, then I suppose it's fine. But in the end, the Rattler is a catastrophic failure, and it tries way too hard to be unique. It earns a solid spot in F tier. Another catastrophic failure is the Coachman. Usually, it's pretty hard to screw up a double-barrel shotgun, but Bethesda miraculously managed to do so. At first, this gun was shooting conventional rifle rounds through a square chamber, and when you reloaded the gun, it ejected the whole cartridge, bullet included. Now that is a classic boneheaded mistake. To their credit, the developers did fix this problem before release, and now it shoots so-called caseless shotgun shells, so you don't have to worry about ejecting anything. However, if you play in third person, you'll see that this problem still persists. The gun still ejects the caseless shotgun shells when reloading, as if they were never fired in the first place. To make it even worse, your character doesn't operate the top lever, the gun just automatically breaks open by itself. Now what's really special about the Coachman's reload is that it's the only gun in the game that has a partial reload animation. So if you shoot one shell, you only have to reload one shell. And if you shoot two, then you reload two. So yeah, it turns out that Bethesda does have the partial reload mechanic working just fine. They just didn't care to implement it for every other gun in the game. Other than that, the Coachman is a pretty ugly design. And god dang, this thing is comically oversized compared to a real double barrel. But the best part about the Coachman is that the developers forgot to give it a trigger, so it wouldn't fire at all, unless you use the Force like a Jedi. So you know what? I think that solves every problem with these guns. They don't have to be functional designs at all, because everyone is just using space magic to make them work. But in all seriousness, the Coachman is probably the worst incarnation of a double barrel I've ever seen in a video game. Easy F tier for this one. On the opposite end, we have a gun that is entirely too rounded. The Lawgiver just looks plain uncanny. Like it's trying to be a Halo sniper, but it has the cowboy texture pack installed. So the clashing aesthetics just make it end up looking very cursed. And if you squint hard enough, you may confuse it for an anteater. What's even more cursed is that it's magazine fed, yet it also has a cylinder like a revolver. I can't believe they actually did it. They did the meme. They made a magazine fed revolver. That's hilarious. Not only that, but the ergonomics are terrible too. That stock has no padding, so that 50 cal round would absolutely destroy your shoulder. Plus, the front grip is way too low and close. Definitely not optimal for recoil control. I suppose they wasted all their time designing the sliding top cover instead. This part automatically slides back during a reload, so you can insert the magazine from the top. Which is cool, but the problem is that it magically floats backwards with nothing holding it in place. It should slide forward into this groove, which was specifically designed for this sliding mechanism. It looks like the animator got confused on this one. At the same time though, it does work as intended in third person, so I don't know how they messed this one up. That just shows you how bad their lack of quality control is. Besides that, the gun itself is pretty miserable to use. The fire rate is artificially capped, so you have to wait a second between shots, which makes it extremely unresponsive and unsatisfying. When I picked up this gun for the first time, I only fired a few rounds, then immediately dropped it because of how clunky it was. The only good design choice with the Lawgiver is that it has an integrated red dot sight instead of basic irons. So props to them for that. I would definitely like to see more integrated red dots on these futuristic guns. Like come on people, this is the future. Iron sights are so 2008. But overall, the Lawgiver is another huge stinker. No doubt about it, it belongs in F tier. The tombstone carries the same uncanny aesthetic, but I'd say it's even uglier than the Lawgiver. Just look at this thing's silhouette, 
in no way does it resemble a firearm. If anything, it looks more like a Nova Galactic spaceship. But really, it's just an amalgamated mass of random parts and useless details. I guess the random details are supposed to make it look more interesting. But really, it just makes it end up looking like an AI-generated cursed gun image. If I didn't know any better, I would have assumed this was a pile of trash that spontaneously welted together out in space. And just like the Lawgiver, this one has a terribly uncomfortable stock with metal padding, because if you don't like bruising your shoulder on every shot, then you ain't a real man. With an 11mm bullet especially, this thing should be kicking pretty hard, but it feels a lot more like a submachine gunning game. If you look at the magazine and ammunition, these bullets are definitely on the smaller side. There is no way they measure up to 11mm. It looks a lot more like a PDW size cartridge. If you compare that to the other guns which use 11mm, there's quite a massive difference in size. So once again, it seems that the developers cut corners with the tombstone and just coded it to use 11mm because they were too lazy to give it its own ammunition type. It should be a PDW or a carbine, yet it's still classified as an assault rifle in game. But this thing is way too obese for an assault rifle, or any type of gun really. Dare I say, this design is on par with the Fallout 4 assault rifle. I really don't understand why they had to make it so bulky and add on so many random details. Guns aren't supposed to be super complex and have random parts everywhere. They are supposed to be simple and effective, and there is plenty of beauty in simplicity. But the tombstone is the antithesis to beauty just like your mom. I also think it's really funny that the fire selector is all the way down on the forward grip. No way in hell is that thing connected to the firing mechanism, unless it's using Bluetooth. You've also got this random bubble on the gun that pops out during the reload. I guess that's the automatic smart gun charging button. Other than that, I don't have much else to say on the functionality of this gun. I'm trying to preserve the remainder of my, br <laughs> my brain cells. This gun is simply so ugly that I never bother to use it, and I don't want to waste any more time on it. The tombstone is so bad that it goes beyond F tier. This one belongs in the forbidden Fallout 4 assault rifle tier. For the most part, the Laredo guns are the most disgusting guns in the entire game. And as a native Texan, I find it downright offensive that they would dare take a Western aesthetic and ruin it with a cartoonish Fortnite art style. And look, I can understand wanting to have a goofy art style for a fantasy game. That is perfectly fine. But this game is not Fortnite, nor is it high fantasy like Borderlands. Starfield has a rather grounded and grim atmosphere, so these highly cartoonish guns just don't fit in with the rest of the game. So with all that being said, let's take a look at the one exception, the Razorback. The Galactic Iron, I like to call it. This one is so much better in comparison to its inbred cousins. It still has some rounded features, but it's all balanced out with sharp edges. It's mostly inspired by the Mateba Unica, and it has the barrel on the bottom instead of the top, while also having an internal hammer. Unlike the Unica though, this one is break action, and you replace the entire cylinder during the reload. It almost looks like this animation was recycled cycled from the regulator, or uh, vice versa, which is pretty lame. The cylinder itself is pretty weird. It breathes like it's a pulsing egg sac. A little unsettling, but uh, I suppose it's cool. The iron sights, though, are surprisingly basic for such a futuristic gun. The grip is probably the worst offender, though. It's extremely crude and blocky. It doesn't look very comfortable at all. It looks like I could have made that shit in my middle school woodshop class. But overall, the Razorback does have a badass big iron feel to it, so I do like it. It's not perfect, but I can appreciate what they were going for with this one. I'll put the Razorback in B tier. Next up is the Grendel. Obviously, this one is heavily inspired by the P90. It just has a unique Battle Pass skin slapped onto it. I do like the overall look of it, but at the same time, there are some weird things going on. Compared to the real P90, this one has a reciprocating charging handle instead of a static one. You don't ever use the charging handle either, which is pretty lame. The gun just, uh, automatically charges itself, I suppose. The motorcycle shock on the bottom is odd, too. I guess that's supposed to, uh, dampen the recoil. And I'm not sure what this battery is for. Maybe this is actually an airsoft gun but I'll just assume it serves some kind of purpose. Overall, I think the Grindel is a pretty solid design. It looks sharp and has good style. The main thing I don't like is its lackluster performance in-game. But again, that's due to the whole game nerfing full-auto guns across the board. If you switch it to semi-auto, then it holds up pretty good. So you know what? I'll be nice this time and give the Space P90 an A-tier. 
The Beowulf is another cool design, which looks like a crossover between the WA-2000 and the P-90. Pretty interesting concept, and it's my favorite looking fantasy design in the whole game. However, I do think it's really funny that the gun has an engraving on it that says, Clear weapon before cleaning. Like, no shit, you don't need that stamped on there. The type of people who need directions on their guns are also the same kind of people that created the need for warning labels on shampoo bottles. But anyway, the skeletonized frame with the exposed barrel is pretty cool too. But holy mother of bullpups, just look at how far back that barrel goes. Seriously, it looks like this gun suffers from extreme bullpupism. On normal bullpups, or any gun for that matter, you'll see that they always have enough space in the back for the bolt to reciprocate. Meanwhile, the Beowulf has barely any space at all, so that means it wouldn't be able to function, right? Well, not necessarily. It could have a unique mechanism like what was used by the TKB-22. This one has the same idea, where the magazine is at the rearmost part of the gun. Normally, that would mean there's no room for the bolt to move, but the chamber and bolt aren't right above the magazine. They're much further up, and it uses an elongated bolt to reach all the way back and rake in ammunition. So for my sanity's sake, let's just assume that's how the Beowulf functions. What I can't excuse though, is the reload. In first person, the gun automatically charges itself, much like the Grindel, but if you play in third person, your character manually operates the charging handle and slaps it like an MP5, which is way cooler obviously. So which one is it, huh? Is this thing using space magic, or is it manually operated? I guess it all depends on your perspective. And I mean that literally. It almost seems like they assigned two different animators for first and third person animations, because there's a lot of inconsistencies between them. What's also really inconsistent is magazine capacity and ammunition. The Beowulf is using the same ammunition and magazine as the Grindel, yet it holds 20 less rounds. That also means that this gun is technically classified as a submachine gun, or a PDW, when it should be a battle rifle. Yet the gun itself has the words lightweight assault rifle inscribed into it. At this point, I think it's pretty obvious that the developers don't have a clue on how the classification of firearms works. I mean, come on, they literally gave it the name Beowulf and it's not using the 50 caliber Beowulf round? Now that is false advertisement. Of course, that's a joke. They just so happen to be named after that one poem that I had to read in English class. But seriously, it would have made a lot more sense if this supposed rifle was using a rifle length round. But I'm guessing Bethesda would rather have all these guns share ammunition to make it more convenient for the player. But really, it just ends up ruining the balancing because there's not much reason to use the Grindel over the Beowulf when the Beowulf does four times more damage per shot. It is way more ammo efficient. It has much higher recoil too. So even from a gameplay standpoint, it should have its own unique ammunition. You know, maybe they could have given it a 50 caliber round as a nod to the real life Beowulf cartridge. The Beowulf is a very cool concept, but it has a bunch of inconsistencies, so in the end I'll give the Beowulf a spot in B tier. And of course, as soon as I say all that, we get a 50 caliber anti-material rifle called the Hard Target. When I say 50 cal in this case, it's the caseless equivalent of a 50 BMG. Since it's a caseless round, that means the entire thing is the bullet. That's like a solid 5 inches of pure bullet, which is absolutely huge. Way above average if you ask me. As you can tell, this one's following the same theme as the Grindel and Beowulf. And at first glance, I thought it was simply a modified Beowulf, so I uh, almost forgot to include it. Like it's eerily similar from a distance, it even has the extreme bullpupism issue, but it could still work. Other than that, the overall design mostly reminds me of the GM6 Lynx, especially since it has a reciprocating barrel. It's quite a cool detail, and I'm surprised the developers included it. Really, the only thing wrong with this gun is the magazine. It holds 5 rounds, but if you look at the magazine, it says it holds 7, but 5 is the correct amount. But even better, if you upgrade it to an extended magazine, the magazine stays the exact same size, but it can hold double the ammunition. I, uh, I'm not sure how that works. It must be using space magic or fourth dimensional technology. Overall, the hard target is another pretty solid design, and it is pretty fun to use in game. It only has one mistake, so I'll put it in A tier. Let's move on to the drum beat. This one takes uh, some inspiration from the AR-15, specifically with the Hera Arms furniture and a drum magazine. The rest of the gun is completely its own thing. At first I was thinking this was an auto shotgun due to its overall bulkiness and its thick magazine. It also has the name drum beat, so, you know, I assumed it was called that because it sounds like a drum beat when firing, like but no, it turns out this is another case of false advertisement because it's actually a rifle with a high fire rate. So this is a very similar case to the Maelstrom. It's shooting an even bigger round though, 11mm as it's called. 
and it's extremely dummy thick. It looks like a big bore battle rifle round, yet the recoil is as smooth as butter and it handles like a submachine gun despite how bulky it is. So once again, the developers don't understand how these guns would actually perform. It should be hitting a lot harder with a slower fire rate. The magazine is completely wrong too. It somehow holds 60 rounds of these gigantic rounds, but there's simply no way that's possible. I did some quick math on this one too, and it looks like this magazine would hold about 14 rounds or so. It also made me think, why is this using a circular drum magazine when the rounds are rectangular? I don't think this drum mag is optimal for feeding square-shaped caseless ammunition. The overall look of the gun is okay, uh, mostly. It just seems really bulky in general. Like this whole section under the barrel especially just seems like dead weight. And the overall silhouette is uh, a little bit goofy. It almost looks like a dog. I can appreciate what they were going for though. It definitely fits into the sci-fi aesthetic, but it has a lot of issues relating to its functionality and performance. I say the drum beat is on par with the Maelstrom, so it gets a spot in C tier. Another familiar design is the Kodama. It's uh, mostly like a futuristic version of the Tech 9. It is a machine pistol, but I guess it's also a shotgun at the same time because it's using flechette ammunition, which is certainly atypical to say the least. You can even see in the model that it's shooting three separate darts instead of one solid projectile. The barrel is custom fitted for this ammunition, so instead of one big hole, it's three tiny holes. I'm not sure how that would work though. It's not like shotguns have nine different holes for each pellet, but I suppose this uh, could be possible. This gun still breaks the laws of reality though, because it's using the same 7mm round that the Eon and the Grendel use. It just magically transforms into the flechette rounds when you load it into the Kodama. Obviously, it should have its own unique ammunition, since it's using a completely different projectile. So besides the ammunition, the design of the Kodama is pretty cool. It looks sleek and simple, and it fits right into the sci-fi aesthetic. The only thing I think is weird is that the bolt pops up during a reload instead of locking back. Then it automatically closes by itself, and your character never operates the charging handle. That's a pretty common theme at this point though, so uh, it should be expected. So the Kodama is a pretty interesting design and concept, but the ammunition being wrong kinda holds it back. I'll put it next to the Beowulf in B tier. We're actually on a pretty good streak here. I'm surprised Bethesda managed to make some decent designs. But of course, there's still more stinkers to cover. The shoddy is easily one of the worst. It's a, uh, a compact shotgun pistol thing. I don't know what to call it really, it's just an abomination. Just like some of the previous guns, this one suffers from extreme bullpupism. So much so that there's literally nothing behind the magazine at all. And this one is for sure not using an elongated bolt. In this case, the bolt slides back beyond the rest of the gun, so if you hold it too close to your face, you may break your nose or poke an eye out. Now, I don't know about y'all, but it seems like this design wouldn't work, nor is it very user friendly. Even better, it has a useless thumb hole in the grip, which is way too small to wrap your hand around. You can even see in third person that your hand simply clips through the grip for them to hold it. Of course, this one has a magical magazine too. It's able to hold 12 rounds when it should be about 6. It seems even more absurd if you use the extended mag, which can magically cram in 28 rounds, when it should probably be about half of that. But please, don't modify this thing, because you'll only end up making it look even more cursed. Now I can understand why the government banned short barrel shotguns to prevent atrocities such as this abomination. At the very least, it is kind of fun to use because of how fast you can spam the trigger, but the design itself is atrocious and completely nonsensical. In order to fix the shoddy, I suggest we rename it to the shardy because of how stinky it is. <laughs> Easy F tier for this one. Now the pacifier, at the very least, does resemble a normal looking shotgun, just with a uh, futuristic theme to it. It's basically a semi-auto mag-fed version of the pump shotgun from earlier, and it's very reminiscent of modern day tactical shotguns. This one looks extra tactical though, like they went all in on the mall ninja aesthetic. It's so tactical that it has canted iron sights that are completely unusable. That's probably because the developers didn't care to implement a canted sighting mechanic, which is pretty lame because modders have already done that for Fallout 4. I don't know why you would need canted irons on a shotgun anyway, but besides all that nonsense, I can still get behind the overall look of this gun. The biggest problem with this shotgun is that it doesn't have a charging handle, so there's no way for you to manually charge the weapon. But of course, that doesn't matter, because your Chad character simply breaks the shotgun and forces it into pump action mode. 
There are shotguns that can switch between semi-auto and pump action, such as the Spaz-12. But in that case, you still need to use the charging handle while in semi-auto mode. You have to switch to pump action to use the pump. The pacifier doesn't have the ability to switch to pump action. It's strictly semi-auto, so it's not like this would work anyway. The only reason why your character operates it this way is because the developers cut corners by reusing animations from the pump shotgun. And as a result, it also has the same issue where the forearm is in the rearmost position. One thing that I do think is cool about this shotgun is that it's using a bolt that folds in on itself. Pretty neat detail, honestly. The pacifier certainly has potential, but unfortunately it suffers from lazy development. It's a little bit better than the pump shotgun though, so I'll put it in C tier. Oh boy, the breach. I don't even know about this one, man. This thing looks like an alien. So let's break this down. It's a bullpup revolver shotgun, but it doesn't fire directly from the cylinder. No. Of course not, there is no room in the stock for a firing mechanism, so instead, the cylinder feeds the round forward, then up into a chamber, which is where it fires the ammunition. So instead of this being a magazine-fed revolver, it's a revolver-fed semi-auto shotgun. <laughs> I don't even know how you would get this round to move from the cylinder and into the chamber. It needs to go... <laughs> it needs to go on a rough journey like a salmon migrating upriver. It's definitely way too complicated, and the concept itself is inherently regressive. Why would you bother making a futuristic revolver shotgun when you could just go with a full-auto drum-fed shotgun instead? It would be so much simpler and ten times more effective. This thing only holds six rounds too, and the fire rate is miserably slow. Not only do you have to wait for the cylinder to rotate, but the fire rate is artificially capped too, so you have to wait an extra second until you can pull the trigger, and that makes it the most unresponsive and clunkiest gun in the entire game. The overall look of the gun is pretty wacky too. There's a lot of extra junk going on here that doesn't make any sense. Like there's these bricks hanging off the side of the gun, and these random spare iron sights on the side, along with the uh, big hump in the middle of the gun. I mean, there's just useless junk all over the place. And I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out what it does, because it doesn't do anything. The breach is just a huge failure all around, really. It belongs in F tier. The AA-99 is another otherworldly looking gun. And by otherworldly, I mean the Minecraft world, because this thing is entirely made of squares. In a way, the open receiver design is similar to the Origin, or the Maelstrom from earlier, but this one is using the big fat 11mm round. It also has a built-in cooling system, which is pretty neat because that means this thing would actually be useful in space. Other than that, it's extremely bulky and oversized, but I suppose that extra weight wouldn't really matter too much if you specifically use it in low gravity environments. Ugh, I'm kinda tired at this point honestly. I really don't feel like going into a deep dive with the AA-99 because there's not much reason to. I'll just leave it at that. But before I go, that scope is really stupid. That shit looks like a fucking slip and slide. Normally, I would put the AA-99 in F tier because of how ugly and bulky it is, but I'll go ahead and put it in D tier because I do think the cooling system is a neat concept. And for the last firearm on the list, the micro gun. Obviously, it's inspired by the real life micro gun, which is a smaller version of the classic 762 minigun. Instead of using 556, this one is using the caseless 7mm pistol round, and it sports a much lower fire rate, so that would help reduce the recoil and make it easier to handle. It might still be a little bit impractical though, but that doesn't matter because the micro gun is operating by video game rules. It follows other video game tropes too, including the infamous spin-up delay. It's a really common myth spread by video games, but no, miniguns don't actually have to spin up before they fire. They fire instantly. It is genuinely irritating seeing this in video games still, and it makes them frustrating to use. It's not like it's a good balancing mechanic either, because the microgun is absolutely terrible in-game. It's extremely inaccurate, so most of your shots will just straight up miss, which does make perfect sense because it's a handheld minigun. What doesn't make sense though is its artificially low base damage. So with the low accuracy, high fire rate, and low damage, it's the worst gun in the entire game for ammo efficiency. It is simply not worth wasting your ammunition on this thing when you could just use the Beowulf or the Grindel instead. The fire rate and accuracy do increase as you keep shooting, so 
It has high DPS potential, but by the time it gets good, it runs out of ammo. It only holds 300 rounds in the magazine, which is pretty low for a minigun, but still surprisingly high considering the size of this magazine. It looks like this magazine could probably hold about 100 rounds at the most. It's not even close to 300. The reload is pretty silly too, because your character balances the whole weight of the microgun with only their right hand supporting it. Not even the strongest man in the world has wrists strong enough to perform such a feat. Magazine fed miniguns in general are kind of silly because they aren't a real thing. You are so much better off using a whole backpack of ammunition instead. Another problem with this handheld design is that it's spitting links directly into your left arm, and that doesn't seem very pleasant. Obviously, it would be a lot more user friendly if the links were ejected downward or to the right. I'm not sure how well caseless ammo would work with links anyway. Caseless ammunition is rather fragile after all, but it seems like the caseless ammo used in Starfield is quite sturdy, so I suppose it works. Also, this gun has square barrels despite shooting a round bullet. So once again, they failed to fit the right shape into the right holes. Just because the propellant is square doesn't mean that the bullet is. So all around, the microgun is plagued with tons of issues and terrible design choices. The gun itself does look cool and intimidating though, so at least it's not ugly. I would say that the micro penis belongs in D tier. So there you go, that's everything wrong with the guns in Starfield, and this is what the finalized tier list looks like. As you can see, there's a lot of big stinkers, and not a single one of these guns made it into the S tier, because none of them are perfect. If I loosened up a little bit though, then I could be nice and give the hard target and the hunting rifle an S tier. They only have a single mistake that's not really a big deal after all. So in the end, I do have to admit that there are quite a few good gun designs in this game. Not all of them are absolutely terrible. All the guns in A and B tier are genuinely good ideas that are only held back by minor mistakes, which could easily be fixed. I could even see some of the designs from C and D tier going much higher up if they were completely overhauled. But everything else in F tier and below is completely unsalvageable and should be thrown in the dumpster. And I know some of y'all are gonna ask, hey, Wait a minute, what about the energy weapons and grenade launchers and all the other weapons? Well, I'll have to save those for another time because I simply cannot handle any more firearms cringe at this moment. If you guys really enjoyed this video, then I'll make sure to do a follow up. As always, I'm curious to see what y'all have to say. Do you guys hate these guns just as much as I do? Or was I completely wrong? Feel free to correct me in the comments down below because there's bound to be a few things that I missed or got wrong. That's all I got for now. See y'all next time. But before we go, I wanted to give a big thanks to Enlisted for sponsoring this video. Their support allows me to keep making these videos for y'all. And remember, you can use my link in the description or the pinned comment to get a head start on Enlisted with a sweet starter pack.